Since his appointment late last year as opposition spokesman on health, MP Dayton Campbell has been raising the alarm about the deteriorating situation at Cornwall Regional Hospital, putting the health and safety of both patients and staff at risk unnecessarily. This probe, we will give him an opportunity to expand on the issues that he has been quite strident about, and correctly so, over the past few months. Well, the first thing is that um, the Cornwall Regional Hospital has had some reports of air quality issues. Um, the first report was in 1999 with an old ventilation system that they had at the facility. Paho's report says that the first report that came to them of the issue was in 2009. And so there were always air quality issues coming up over the years, I think about 15 or so reports. But in 2016, it was elevated and they thought there was a crisis and they needed to do something greater in response to the challenges there. And that's when they started to relocate some of the services off the building. Originally, they have about 38 services. Um, on the main building there and they had removed about 12 of them between September 2016 up until February 2017. And I say February 2017 because something important happened then. In February 2017, February 28, the CMO, the Chief Medical Officer, along with all of the technocrats within the ministry, unanimously came to a decision that the main building should be evacuated. and. Uh, that was the main building because, as I said before, some of the services were already off. And so it wasn't uh, within 10 days, I think you had said. Within 10 days, and they gave the reasons why. Because there were still unidentified toxicants. The things causing the symptoms, they still were not able to fully identify what exactly is the agent or what are the agents. Um, two, they, had, they made recommendations as to how to preserve the services. So they weren't suggesting the closure of healthcare services within St. James. They were suggesting that you should um, essentially escalate the, the, the process of relocation that had already started to remove the other services so that persons would not be on the building and getting sick as they try to tend to the sick. And the minister overruled that decision. He he hasn't provided any evidence as to what he used to overrule it other than that it was the only type A facility and if you close it, persons would have died. But nobody suggested closure. The critical issue I hear you saying, or the critical point that you're making, is that notwithstanding a unanimous recommendation from the technical team, the minister, as policy leader, took a really what was a, a political decision to overrule the technical people and um, perhaps within his authority decided to allow the building to remain open. But that has certain consequences that flow from that. The first one seems to me an issue of accountability. If you took it onto yourself to overrule and what has resulted one year later is a debacle, you know, then there must accountability demands that there be consequences. And the second issue which I'd like you to speak to is were the staff and patients who were exposed to the sick building, were they alerted so that they could make an informed choice as to what the risks may have been by continuing over a protracted period of time to work in a building. The chief medical officer and the technocrats came to the position. I, I don't believe that they came to that position in a cavalier way. It was an informed position that they came to, to say that based on what is going on, we need to evacuate the main building. The Medical Association of Jamaica said that they also did a report which suggested that they should evacuate the main building and the minister said that he didn't get that report. He has made suggestions in social media that he got verbal advice from Paho that allowed him to come to a position to overrule 
the chief medical officer and the technocrats. That's a very strange suggestion because the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, at that time would not have done a formal assessment of Cornwall Regional because they sent their contracted environmentalists to come between March 15 to March 19. And the 10 days would have started from the 28th of February. So that period would have already expired before PAHO's assessment team even came arrived. to do the assessment at the facility. Which is why you have challenged have the challenged. assertion. It is so improbable it that is. PAHO would have made any recommendation to contradict that you have challenged the minister I've to, challenged to him, prove. And I want to challenge him again using this avenue for him to provide the evidence to Jamaica. We find it very strange and we think the minister is bringing into the, the credibility and reputation of PAHO into disrepute by suggesting that they would be so irresponsible as to one, advise him to overturn his chief technocrats and two, to do so without having done a formal assessment. For you to have that report and not discuss it with the staff at the facility to me is a reckless endangerment of the well-being of the persons that are working and also the patients that are within the facility because if you had given them the report and they say all right we think that you have to inhale or ingest a certain quantity of this in order for you to get cancer so we are comfortable going into the facility then that's one argument but the fact of the matter is that you had that report the nurses are suggesting that the members are being affected by whatever the toxicants are in the building and you did not say anything to them. What are the symptoms that the nurses were having? One, they were coughing up blood. And some of the mold have been known to cause pulmonary hemorrhage, bleeding in the lungs. So naturally, coughing up blood, would, you would understand how that would happen. Two, some of them were having just listlessness. They're low in energy. They're always sleepy. Some of them were having muscle weakness. Some of them were having memory loss. They're not simple. These are not trivial things. Trivial things. Here, right? Mm. Some of them are going home and their partners are having symptoms. So you look at it and you're saying some of them are getting hypertension and all of these symptoms are taking place. They're having skin conditions. You said some of them have had to bathe in milk to get a little relief. On our tour of the facility in early March, we saw an era at the facility that they actually sanitized the documents. Because apparently, if you're referring a patient from Cornwall Regional, Say you're sending a patient to the University Hospital of the West Indies and you were to just take up, say, write on a report and just take it up and put it in an envelope and send it. The persons receiving at the university would start having the symptoms. So they have an error that they actually sanitize the documents and then they scan them before they send them. So these so are not ho trivial ho ho symptoms hold on. that were what taking place. You said you saw this in March. This was March this year? March 2018. So... Already, steps were being taken to protect the staff at other institutions um, who were getting these dockets, who right. were getting the, the patient dockets or elements of it. <laughs> but the staff at Cornwall Regional themselves, the administrative staff, the medical staff, the portering staff, they were unaware, they were deprived of, of the opportunity to make an informed choice for their own health and safety, even though it was known by the technical people that it was so serious that they were already taking steps to protect staff at other but facilities. What we have here is a, a bad situation, a bad hand was played, but it was made much worse um, by poor decision making, and not only poor decision making, but decision making that was in a sense secret that did not allow people to understand the risks and and the, um, the, the the pathogens and the carcinogens that they were being exposed to coming to work which must be a basic right of any employee to know what their employer is exposing them to